How your exam marks become grades. What do you need for that A-star? I'm sure as you go through the process of exam after exam, you're wondering how what you do on those papers actually turn into a grade at the end of it all. How well do you actually have to do to get that grade that you've really been dreaming about? Also, you might want to know if the examiner set a really difficult exam, is that going to ruin your chances? I'm going to be using A-level AQA psychology as an example in this video. Well, this process applies across subjects, GCSE and A-level, and even between exam boards. But for other subjects, the numbers will be different. So if after this you want numbers for your other subjects, just Google a name of your exam board and resource statistics and grade boundaries. There should be a PDF for each year. Then just scroll to your subject. All the data I'm going to use in this video is freely accessible to everybody online. So if you want to go and check what I'm about to say. To understand what's going to happen with how this year's results will fall, we need to look at the previous two years. In 2018, 47,000 students set the AQA A-Level in Psych, and in 2017, 44,000 set the A-Level Psych exams. And these are the percentage of students who got each grade in 2018. And these are the percentages for 2017. So as you can see immediately, the percentage of students getting each grade is very stable year on year. And this is no accident. The exam boards use a system called comparable outcomes meaning they make sure a student isn't disadvantaged depending on which year they sit the exams. To make this clear, here are the percentages for 2016, 15 and 40. Some variation, but not much at all. The reason the numbers change a little is the exam boards make some small adjustments. For a couple of reasons, but the main one is if they feel I've got a particularly strong or particularly weak group of students doing the A-level that year. And they base that on the GCSE results for that year group. But well, the difference in numbers is so low. It doesn't really affect you as an individual student. So what does this data mean for you and the grade that you want? Let's use last year's data. Now we know it's safe to assume it'll be similar to this year. Well, imagine if we had a representative group of 100 students. In that group of 100 students, only five would get the A star or one in 20. If you want the A star, you must do in your revision what 19 and 20 students won't do. Simply very hard work. An A or above is around 18 in every 100 students. So about one in five. A fantastic achievement for those students well earned over the course of two years of hard work. B and above is 45.4%. So just under half of all students who take these exams will access those higher mark bands. On the other end of the scale, only about three out of every 100 students actually fail each year and get a U. I imagine that's a lower percentage than you expected, but at 27.5%, the number of students with a grade less than a C is approaching a third. So if you're aiming for at least a C, and if you're watching this, I'm sure you are, what you need to do is make sure what you do is outcompete all of those students in the quantity and quality of your revision. Which is my main point. You're not competing against the exam for your grade. You're competing against all the other students who take it. It's really like a race, and the exam is the track. It doesn't matter if the exam is easy or hard, because everyone must do the same exam. If it's easy, you're just going to have to score that much higher to keep your grade. Really what you want to see is hard questions that you're prepared for. Let's talk about how those grades map on to what you need to score in your exams. I'm going to very slightly simplify this, uh, but you will get the idea and the general figure for each grade. Also, again, all this data I'm going to talk about is open for everyone to see on the exam board websites for each subject. So the exam results come in, and as you might expect, if you collect such a large exam data set together, you're hopefully going to see a normal distribution curve. Now, as we've seen, the exam boards already know pretty much what proportion of students will get each grade. So they might alter that slightly when seeing how students have responded to the scripts, but it won't change significantly. So in 2018, for AQA Psychology, this was a breakdown of paper. Let's take this as typical, but it will vary by a few points each year. If a population of students scores a little lower because of difficult papers, it might go down, or up if the scores go up because of easy papers. Here's 2017, so you can see the variation has been in the last two years of this new specification. 
So let's look at this carefully for last year. We're looking at a score of 214 for an A star out of 288 points, available on the free papers. But 74.3% or 65.97 for an A, 55.5 for a B, 45.48 for a C, 35.76 for a D, and to pass with an E, only 26.38. Just remember again, these percentages will shift a little each year. Now those numbers might seem surprisingly low to you. And I think what I should tell you is this. Students, even very capable students, score lower in the exams than you might expect. Only 4.7 got 74.3% or above. So in a 16 marker, that's averaging a 12. Only 17.9% of students get more than 66% of the marks. So these exams are challenging. The markers will want you to be precise in your answers. So make sure you're reading the questions very carefully and doing everything you can to shape your response to the demands of that question. So, if you're aiming for one of those grades this year, I hope the percentages are with you. Good luck. PsychBoost is supported by students on Patreon. To help PsychBoost in creating free educational content and get access to video scripts, follow the link. I hope that student skills video is useful. Don't forget I've got content videos for all free papers and a website with lots of free resources. Thanks for watching.